Crafters, Lisa here with another Inspiration Friday project. So glad you stopped by my channel. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you click on the link below to subscribe and click on the little bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. So this week's Inspiration Friday is kind of a takeoff on our um, reusable sandwich bags that we did a couple weeks ago. So I have like rediscovered the love of sewing um, because I have been using my sewing machine so much with making masks. And so the reversible sandwich bags was an idea to help um, the environment by getting rid of some plastic. So the next take on that are these cute um, um, bowl covers that we can use. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have a drawer full of Tupperware containers and half of them do not have lids or I've got lids that I do not have containers. So we've all got um, bowls in our cupboard and we have leftovers that we have to put in the fridge. So this is my take on making a bowl cover. Um, and the cool thing about these covers is I add a lot of extra um, length to them around the sides. So these can fit multiple size bowls. The other really cool thing about these covers is I have discovered this fabric that I'm using on the inside and it's called PUL and I'll link the website that I get it from but it is a food safe waterproof um, fabric so it's really nice um, for these type of things. Also great for the sandwich bags which I commented a couple weeks ago on those but the nice thing about these is they store really easy and they're really cute. So I am, this is the one I'm gonna show you in the video how to make. Um, these ones are gonna be going into our trailer and then this set I'm gonna have in my kitchen. Now what a great gift idea. Um, you guys can make these, um, give them for gifts. The other thing I got to thinking about is how fun it would be to use your Cricut and actually personalize them. Put a monogram on them. Maybe you're getting ready for a shower gift or you need a birthday gift. Um, lots of fun. How fun too when you're taking your next um, item to a potluck and you bring it covered in this. Really going to be a nice added feature. So give me a second to get my camera angle changed and we will get making. So let's get started with this project. As you guys can see, as I showed you already, this is my cute bowl cover that I've already made. Now I have made this one. I'm going to make another one to match this for my um, kitchen and then I'm going to make some for the motorhome also. So let's go ahead and get started. I did want to show you guys again. Um, I like a longer edge on my bowl covers and so that's why I'm coming down to um, a little bit further here. Plus this is an eight and a half inch bowl. This cover could easily fit onto a larger size bowl also. The other thing I really like about this cover is you guys are going to see it's got a nice finish to it. Um, and then the PLU, um, which we talked about, is a food safe waterproof fabric that I like to use on the inside. So I'm going to save, um, have links to all of this down below for you guys, but I just wanted to make sure you got a chance to see that. So let's go ahead and talk about what the supplies are that we're going to be using for this project first. Okay, so let's talk about the supplies that we're going to be using. Of course, you're going to need a sewing machine for this project. Um, I like to use a measuring tape and I'll show you um, how we're going to use that. I'm using a half inch elastic, um, the braided elastic. Um, so I've got a little bit of supply of that. Of course, you're going to need some good fabric scissors. I like to use a chalk mark um, and that's going to help us draw out the circle that we're going to need. Um, I like to use my um, bone folder here um, to help press out my seams. Um, I've, as I've said in other um, um, videos before, I'm a clip girl. You can definitely use pins if you like to use pins, um, but I do like to use my clips. Now I've already cut out the fabric um, to match the other bowl, so I'm going to cut this one out with you guys. Um, this is a cute print. I'm going to be making some more bowl covers for our um, trailer. And so I just love this print. If you guys saw my um, video on reusable sandwich bags, you guys will um, recognize the print. So, and I'll make sure I put a link to that one down below too. So, um, and then the PLU. 
So um, the light is probably really hard to see the PLU here, but this is a great fabric. It's got a kind of like a matte finish on one side, and then it's got a shiny finish um, on the other side. And I don't know if I can really show you that, but it's got a shiny finish, and that's what we call the good side. So we're going to go ahead and cut um, out what we need. But before we determine that, um, and I've got step-by-step -step instructions on the blog, um, but what we need to do is we need to determine how much material we're going to do. So what you want to do is you want to take your bowl, okay? And then what you're going to do is you are going to measure the diameter of your bowl. So the diameter of this bowl would be going straight across. And this one is like, all right, about eight and a quarter to eight and a half. So I'm going to round it off to eight and a half, okay? So if I have an eight and a half inch bowl, I like to put about a three inch, um, add three inches to mine, okay? So if you're going to add three inches all the way around, what you want to do is you want to take the diameter of your bowl and you want to add six inches, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and say this is an eight and a half inch bowl, so I need a 14 and a half circle to be able to um, create this. So what I do then is I take my fabric. Now, one thing you guys that's really fun to do is you see in the stores, they've got the flat folds out. Um, most of those are 18 by 20, so you definitely um, can get a good um, bowl out of that. So what I want to do is I want to cut a good circle, right? So what I'm going to do is I am going to fold my fabric into quarters. So I'm going to fold it in half, okay? And then I'm going to fold it in half again. So that's in quarters, right? And I should have pressed this one a little bit better. I've got a little there. Then what I'm going to do is I told you guys my measurement was for a 14 and a half, right? So since I've got it measured this way, I'm going to split my 14 and a half in half again. So that's going to be seven and a quarter, okay? So if I take my tape measure, and I measure out seven and a quarter, this is where my chalk comes in, I am going to put a chalk mark right there. And then I am just going to take it a little bit further and I'm gonna do another mark at seven and a quarter. Now I've got a chart on um, down below in the comments that will help you with the size of your circle. Um, and then of course on my blog, I've got detailed instructions on this step-by-step. -step, so. Sometimes I like to watch a video, but it's also nice to have the step-by-step -step instructions. So see, I'm just going around and I'm measuring seven and a quarter all the way around, okay? So I've got quite a few marks, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my chalk, and I am just gonna finish out that circle, or a quarter of that circle. Okay, so now I've got this all circled out, got it marked. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and I am going to cut where I've got my chalk line. Okay, and then I'm going to open it up and I have got a circle that is going to fit my bowl. Okay. So if I take it and I drape it over my bowl, you can see I definitely have got room to add my elastic and to have a nice fit on my bowl. Now, you can do those exact same steps to cut out the PLU, but what I like to do is I like to use this piece I just cut out as just a pattern piece. So I'm gonna open up my PLU here, get to a corner of it, And I am just going to lay my pattern, my, now I can call this my pattern piece, right? And I am just going to cut right around it. Now, if you guys are rotary blade users, you could definitely use your rotary blade um, to do this step. But I'm just going to go ahead and use my scissors. Of course, this is going to slide all around for me.
just can't quite get at a good angle here. <laughs> so just play with it. Now by doing it with the three inches, the other thing that's really nice about that is I'm going to be able to use this on lots of different size bowls. So it's not like you have to make a um, bowl for every size that you have in the kitchen or a cover for every size you have in the kitchen. Okay, so now the next step is, is we remember we have a good side and a bad side or a right side and a wrong side to the PLU. So this is really important. The good side of the PLU is, um, it's got a little shine to it, um, and so that is the right side. And then I've got my fabric, of course, it's a lot easier to tell the right side to the wrong side. So I am going to put my right sides together, okay? And then this is where, you guys know, I'm a clip girl. I'm going to go around and I am going to clip it to hold it in place. Because the next step we're going to do is we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and we are going to put a half inch seam on our circle. Now, as I clip these around, one of the things we want to make sure that we do is we're going to leave an opening. Now, maybe you can remember that and you won't forget to do it, but this is also where I like to take my chalk. And I am going to do anywhere from a two to a three inch opening. You want that opening because you are going to pull, when we um, do the right sides out, we're going to pull it through there. So I am going to start here on my sewing machine. I'm going to go all the way around. I'm going to back stitch as soon as I start my stitch. I'm going to go all the way around and then I'm going to back stitch right there again. So I'm going to hop over to my sewing machine. I'm going to put a seam all the way around it, and then I'll be right back to show you what our next step is going to be. So I'm back, and I've put my seam all the way around. Put that down a little bit. might be easier for you guys to see. So I have my opening um, that I still have there, and I always like to clip my threads as I go. So I'm going to go ahead and pin those thread ends. And then what we're going to do is we are going to turn this right sides out. Now, before I do that, I am going to hop over here and I'm going to turn my iron on because one thing we're going to want to do after we get this turned right sides out is we're going to want to give it a really nice press. And I'll show you guys why we're going to want to do that. Now, this is also where I like to take my bone folder and try to find my opening again. And if you take that bone folder, it really helps get the edges out. Now some people like to um, take a um, pinking shears and clip off the edges. I have found that this just lays really nice that there's not a reason to do it, but you definitely can if that's something that you would like to do. Okay, so I am going to flip this mat out and I'm going to bring in my new favorite tool. My new favorite toy that I've discovered is my wool pressing mat. Absolutely love this. Um, just started using it a couple weeks ago and it just presses so nice. So what I'm going to do now is I am just going to go through and I'm just going to get a good press. This is the only time that you're going to be able to give yourself a good press on those outside seams because soon enough we're going to be adding some elastic and you're not going to be able to give it a good press. So what I do is I just go through and give it a really nice press. Okay. Now, we're not closing off that opening yet. That's awful tempting, thinking that you need to get that, that closed off, but not yet. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we are going to create a casing for this and this is what's going to give this such a nice nice finish okay so I got a nice press okay now I'm using half inch elastic you can use whatever you have on hand Lord knows that elastic is in short supply but what we're going to do is we're going to create a casing 
all the way around. So I've got half inch elastic. I'm going to go in just about an inch on my sewing machine. And this time we are going to sew all the way around. Okay. Eventually we're going to close this off, but we're not going to do that yet. Okay. So you want to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to do a seam all the way around. Again, keep in mind, you want to do a back stitch when you start and you want to do a back stitch when you stop just to tie off that thread. So give me a second, I'm going to do this, and you guys are going to see how quick and easy this little project is. So give me a second, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've done my seam all the way around, and I will tell you guys, I ended up going with a three-quarter inch um, seam all the way around instead of an inch. And so what I'm going to do is, once again, flip as you go, so you don't have to worry about it after the fact. And so now you can see that I have created a casing all the way around the outside of my circle. So the next thing to do is to determine how much elastic I need. Now, this is not a science, but what I like to do is I like to bring my bowl back in and I like to take my elastic around my bowl and you kind of, sometimes it's easier if you turn it upside down and bring it around and just loosely put it on there. You're not gonna pull it tight yet, okay? So I've got it loosely around and then I've got it marked with my finger. So it's loosely around. So for my eight inch bowl right now, I measured about 25 inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take three inches off, okay? So that is gonna give me the ability for it to stretch around, okay? So now I'm gonna take a safety pin and I'm going to hook it to the end of my elastic. And then what we're going to do is we are going to thread it all the way around. So once I get it threaded around, I am going to show you how I like to close off my elastic. And then all we need to do, you guys, is finish off that edge and we've created our bag. So a couple things that I like to do here is about when I get to this point, I always get nervous that I'm going to pull this through. So you can pin it or you can put a clip, but just a little, little thing I like to do because I've been known to pull mine all the way through and then you get to pull it out and you get to start all over again. I just love this print. I think it's perfect for the trailer. So as I get it all the way through, and you try not to let your safety pin open up in there. Okay, so I've got it pulled through. I want to make sure that my elastic has stayed flat all the way through. I'm going to hold on to it and stretch it out a little bit. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I actually lay this over the top, okay? And it is, it's about a half inch. I've got it laid over and I am going to zigzag this way, up and down, not lengthwise. I'm going to zigzag here and here. And then as soon as I get back from there, I will show you what, how we're going to close this off. Okay, so I've zigzagged it. Now I do want to make sure you guys realize that when I say I zigzagged it, and I can't see it with white thread, I apologize. I did that three or four times. Three or four times here and three or four times there. So I've got a good tight zigzag on there. Okay, so now what we want to do is pull our elastic all the way in. So spread it out. Okay. So the last thing we need to do is we need to clean finish off that edge. Now, a lot of times when people finish off edges, they um, would take it back to the sewing machine. But what I like to do is I'm going to add a couple clips here. I like to just whip stitch it with a needle and thread. I just think it looks like a nicer finish um, than doing a stitch on the sewing machine. But if you want to do a stitch on the sewing machine, you most definitely can. 
So I've just got a couple clips there. I'm going to see if my eyeballs are working good enough today to be able to thread a needle. <laughs> that's all we're going to do. So I'm going to fast forward through this, you guys, but I am just going to literally do a whip stitch all around it. So let me guys we have just created another really cute bowl cover how cute is that comes down the sides really nice definitely do that on a bigger bowl so let me know what you think I'd love to see your comments down below if you have any questions I'd love to see what you guys make tag me on social media so glad you joined me for another inspiration Friday and here's a look at our finished product. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget, I've got step-by-step -step, um, directions over on my blog at funstuffcrafts.com, along with lots of other Inspiration Friday projects. Thanks again for joining me. We'll see you next week.